All right, so we are on to chapter six. Uh, and interesting information, I'm recording this, I don't know how many years after I recorded the last stuff. So it's been a little bit since I've recorded. Hopefully everything's all good and set up. Um, yeah, so here's chapter six. We are dealing with reciprocal and quotient and Pythagorean identities. So this chapter is all about solving equations, proving equations. It's basically all algebra. This one I think is my favorite unit, but most, we'll see what you guys think. All right, so the purposes for this lesson are to learn the identities. So like I said, the reciprocal quotient and Pythagorean identities, and we are going to verify equations and then determine some non-permissible values. So non-permissible values are important. Hopefully you remember it from last year. If not, I'll re-explain what those are. Starting off, reciprocal identities. These ones you actually know. Your reciprocal identities are the cosecant and secant and cotangent. These are your reciprocal identities. You know these already, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through this, but these are what those are, and don't worry, I'll give these on your formula sheet. You've seen that already. Next are the quotient identities. If you take a look at your circle like this, so this is not a unit circle, this is just a circle. You can see there's theta, there's x, there's y, and there's your radius. So some typical equations for you. So sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, you've seen this for the unit circle where r is one, but in this case, we're, like I said, we are not dealing with r equals one, it's just radius. We have a similar thing for cosine, and tangent. So hopefully those equations make sense. This is just some review from before. And this gives us the quotient identities, which again, you've actually seen these before. So tan theta, cotangent, these are some identities as well. You've seen this equation before, tan theta equals sine over cosine. You've seen cotangent. These ones are not new, but we only saw that for the unit circle. So we said that r equals one, therefore I can prove this. But let me show you that this works for any situation. So we have tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. If we look at the equations that you're given here, so sine theta is y over r, cos theta is x over r. If we plug those equations in here, and you know we're dividing by fractions, it's the same as timesing by the reciprocal of the denominator. We get this, your r's cancel, and you end up with the same equation. So your r cancels out, even though that radius might not be one. So this equation, these equations work for any circle, not just the unit circle. Um, there are some restrictions to these equations, but we'll get to restrictions later once we get to uh, non-permissible values. Last one here, the Pythagorean identity, which is based on the Pythagorean theorem. This one will look a little bit different once we get to the equation. So here's a typical triangle. Again, if this is on a circle, the hypotenuse there is the radius. Since we're dealing with theta, it makes sense to deal with radius in a circle. Again, here are your expressions for sine theta and cos theta. Now, if I were to take the square of both sides, I would end up with this equation for sine theta, this equation for cos theta. There's a reason why I want these. I want to get to the Pythagorean theorem here, and that will show you why I needed to square those. This is just kind of a proof as to where these identities come from, not that you necessarily need to know where the proof comes from. So you all know this equation, it's the same as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, dealing with a triangle. Now we have y and x and your radius. So if I were to take this entire equation and divide every term by the radius squared, since I'm doing it to everything, this, this is totally possible. You'll notice here my y squared over r squared term is the same as sine squared theta. My x squared over r squared is the same as co squared theta. And then r squared over r squared is just one. So I end up with this identity of sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. So this is my one of the identities. 
um, that we'll be using to solve equations. What I can do with this is I can do a little bit of algebra and show a couple variations on this. So for example, if I subtract cos theta onto the other side, or if I subtract sine theta, you might get this kind of an expression, which is just a manipulation of the equation above. And with sine theta or sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one, if I were to divide all terms by either cosine squared theta or sine squared theta, I'd end up with these two identities. So you can try and figure that out if you want on your own or come and ask me in class. It's really pretty straightforward. You don't need to know, again, where that equation comes from. You just need to know that these are some identities. These five plus the two before plus the three before that, that is all the different identities you'll learn in 6.1. So in these questions, you will be asked to verify an equation. So there's three ways that we can verify. The first way is numerically. So this means to actually plug in numbers and show that two sides equal each other because it's an equation, you have an equal sign. So this is one way to solve it is plug in numbers, show that the left equals the right. The second way is graphically. So again, you take the left-hand side of the equation graph that, take the right hand side of the equation, graph that, and see if your two graphs look the exact same. That's another way to verify, because if they're the same, that means they're equal to each other. And the third way is algebraically. So use algebra to show left side equals the right side. The two types that we'll mainly be doing is numerical and algebraic. Graphing, we don't do as much. You'll see a little bit of it in your practice problems. But for the most part, you're just going to use numerical and algebraic to solve your or to verify your equations. So let's try this. Verify the following identities if theta is pi over 6. So here's an identity. I already showed you this one. So I want to show that this works if theta is pi over 6. So in order to do that, we're going to plug in pi over 6 in for theta. Um, this is on your unit circle, so you can figure out what the exact values of those are. So sine pi over 6 is a half, cos pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Square those, and you'll find that in fact the two sides of these equations do equal each other. So that is proving it, again, making sure that both sides of your equation are equal to each other. So here's our second identity is one plus tan squared theta equals secant squared theta. So then you can see that secant squared theta equals one over cos theta, because that's a value that we can actually solve for. Secant theta is not in your calculator, so we won't be able to solve that. Plug in pi over six, see what each of those equals. Um, again, notice that each of those are squared. So then if I square both of those brackets, here's what I get. And doing a little bit of flippy flip, you get that both sides of the equation equal 4 over 3. That's proving that this identity works for pi over 6. So here's two examples where we verified numerically. Now the problem with verifying numerically is really this only proves that the identity works for pi over 6. That's why usually using numbers to be able to solve this or verify it isn't a great idea because you have, uh, it only works for that specific number. That's it. You haven't proved it for the entire equation, just for when pi, uh, when theta is pi over six. All right, now on to non-permissible values. So these are values that obviously are not permissible, meaning you cannot have them. So remember in a fraction, your denominator cannot equal zero. So this is the whole essence with non-permissible values. We're looking when your denominator would equal zero, and this is a value that is not allowed. So let's determine the restrictions or non-permissible values. You might see it written as both. So sine x over cos x. If we want the non-permissibles for this, we need to find when cos theta is equal to zero, or we're saying cos theta or cos x is not equal to zero. This is not possible, it's not permissible. So the values where cos x is not equal to zero would be 
pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, because again, if you think about your unit circle, the values that would give you cos x equals 0, these are not allowed. We can make a generic equation with this, and in general, the generic equation for restrictions is much better than a list of terms. So here's our restriction for this. Again, if you wanted to find each individual value first and then find the pattern, that's fine. But eventually you will get these patterns pretty quickly with cos x is not equal to zero, sine x is not equal to zero, things like that. Another example, so cotangent x over cos x. So again, the cosine of x is not allowed to equal zero. So we have that exact same restriction. However, we also have the cotangent up top. And even though it's in the numerator, if I were to expand out cotangent, it's really cosine over sine. So again, we'd end up with a sine in the denominator. And I mean, we can, we can simplify that equation. But sine x is also not allowed to equal zero. So we have actually two restrictions with this. So sine x cannot equal zero at these specific points. And those would be our two, wait, here's the generic equation for that. These would be our two restrictions for this. So pi over two, plus or minus pi n, that is a restriction, or pi times n. And again, n is some integer. And actually for this, there's a more generic restriction for it. I can combine these two restrictions into one restriction like this. Every pi over two, I have a restriction. If you wanted to do just the single ones with sine and cosine, that's fine. But in general, this is your generic, not permissible value. Let's look at this equation. So again, we want non-permissibles. Whatever we have in the denominator cannot equal zero. So if we actually were to expand this out, again, in terms of sine and cosine, you'll end up with this. Again, tan theta or tan x is sine x over cos x, and the secant is one over cosine x. So you'll notice with this again, we have cosine in the denominator. Oh yeah, if you simplify this out, you get one. You have cosine in the denominator, which again, we have this restriction. We have sine in the denominator, which is again, this restriction. And in general, we have the same solution as last time. Again, you can pick if you want to do the two separate ones. You can do this two separate ones. If you just want to do the single, both are fine. So hopefully you're recognizing the pattern with this. Look at your denominators. Any denominator cannot equal zero. All right, here's a new one. So in our denominator here, we have one minus cosine x. So it's not just cos x, it's now cosine, or one minus cosine x. So this whole expression cannot equal zero. So instead of cosine x cannot equal zero, it now cannot equal one. So these are different values. Again, if you wanted to look at the unit circle, these are your restrictions. These are the times that cosine x equals one. So in general, this would be our restrictions or non-permissible values. How about one over tan x? So when we expand this out and simplify it, we know one over tan x is cotangent x. But we also notice that if we have one over tan x, we also have the sine in the denominator. We have both uh, the sine at the very end, but we also notice that cosine was in the denominator in the middle term there. So again, we'd have the restriction where both cosine x is not equal to zero and sine x is not equal to zero, giving us this generic restriction that we had before. So there you go, that's the first section. You've learned 10 identities, if my math is correct. Again, these are gonna be given to you. You do not need to have those memorized. Um, yeah, don't waste your brain space to have those equations memorized. We're gonna need to use these eventually to do some manipulation of equations. And you need to know the restrictions because we'll use those further on. So restrictions, again, just look at your denominators and when those equal zero. So that is the first section. All right, so for this part in the after video lesson thingy, what I thought I would do is I am going to tell you a fun, well, 
fun for me. I'm gonna tell you a dad joke. It's essentially what I'm gonna tell you. My oldest daughter had a phase where she would just love to sit down and for me to tell her jokes. And lots of them she would laugh at because they were really funny. Some of them they would laugh at because I said it funny. Some of them she just, nothing. So I picked some ones that she thought was funny. As a, as a five-year-old, she thought it was funny. So I don't know if you'll find it funny in grade 12, but maybe. These are some good ones. So the joke for today, okay, this one's, she still laughs at this one. So this one's a good one. The joke for today is, what do clouds wear under their clothes? They wear thunderwear. Yep. That one gets her laughing pretty good. It's a good one, and plus it's an underwear joke, so kids love underwear jokes as it is. Uh, there you go, that's your dad joke for today, and I'm hoping that you'll be super excited for tomorrow's because it's gonna be even better than that one.